What's up, boxing fans? This is TBE Boxing back at you again. Today's topic boxing commentators ESPN's Tim Bradley and Andre Ward exposed the fact that Errol Spence is ducking Terence Crawford. Let's chop it up and see what it's all about. On a block with the pole, huh? That's lucky for riches, huh? That's lucky for riches, huh? Pretty rich on me titties, huh? And I got the glazy run up on me. I'ma make you get it. I'ma make you get it. Okay, boxing fans. Let's talk some boxing. We have a lot to chop up today. So, uh, as you all know, for the past three years, and I've been talking about this in, you know, a lot of my videos, Errol Spence has been ducking Terrence Crawford by using various excuses, you know, one after the other. Him and his coach, uh, Derek James, basically. And, you know, uh, most of the LDBC fanboys, you know, especially uh, Tweedledee and Tweedledum are fan of boxing and blue blood sports. So these guys have been running all kind of narrative, you know, trying to uh, basically uh, cover up the fact that uh, Errol Spence has been ducking Crawford. And so they have, you know, been running, you know, uh, various narratives, uh, making excuses for Errol Spence. You know, they, I mean, they go around calling Canelo and other fighters ducks. They call, they say Canelo is ducking Charlo, uh, you know, but they never will ever say that Errol Spence is ducking Crawford. But they, they, they have no problem saying that, uh, you know, uh, Anthony Joshua is ducking Deontay Wilder. Are they, you know, Fury ducking Deontay Wilder? Uh, but they'll never say Errol Spence is ducking Crawford, okay? They'll never say that because, you know, they, I mean, Errol Spence is basically in, you know, in the, in their protection program. So, you know, they make all kind of excuses for Errol Spence. As, and then they go so far as to basically try to get uh, people to accept the fact that Errol Spence should never fight Terence Crawford. This is what they, I mean, I did a video recently about that as well, where we saw uh, Fanon from Fanon Boxing was on the air, live on his channel, crying, literally shedding tears about the fact that, uh, you know, trying to make up reasons why Errol Spence should not, you know, uh, fight Terence Crawford. So uh, recently, you know, uh, I mean, cause now, at this point, and you know, at this point, you know, it's it's getting so blatant the way Errol Spence is ducking Terence Crawford that you know people are beginning to pay attention. You know, people are beginning to say, "Well, hey, the emperor has no clothes." I mean, what's going on here? Because we saw Errol Spence when he had to fight with Danny Garcia. We saw him, you know, we saw that Terence Crawford showed up at the fight, and it, it was like, you know. Errol Spence took it, took it as an insult, basically. He, he was basically saying he doesn't know why uh, Crawford is showing up at his, at his fight, that he wouldn't show up at Crawford's fight, okay? And that, uh, you know, he just want to go back to his ranch and, you know, whatever, and play with his horses and his ducks or whatever he has on his ranch. So uh, this is basically what's been going on. So, you know, a lot of people saw that and they took that like, whoa, I mean, hey, this is going to be, we mean you don't know why he's coming to your fight. Uh, you know, he's coming to your fight because he wants to fight you. Okay. So even, even you know, some of Errol Spence's own fans, uh, you know, was kind of, you know, surprised that Errol Spence would say something like that because the tradition of a fighter showing up at your fight, you know, especially a fighter who wants to fight you, it's a long tradition in boxing and it's been going on from the basically since almost since the inception of boxing, you know, especially with Muhammad Ali when he, you know, he used to do all those antics when he wanted to fight Sonny Liston. So uh, this is, you know, something that that's been going on in boxing for a long time. It's a tradition. But here it is that Errol Spence is basically saying he doesn't know why, you know, Terence Crawford is showing up in his fight. So uh, after that, you know, a lot of people started questioning, well, does Errol Spence really want this fight with Crawford or not? So, uh, another thing that Errol Spence began doing now when, you know, people ask him about Crawford because it, it, now it looks like ever since, uh, you know, Crawford knocked out uh, Kel Book, shout out to Kel Book, uh, people have been, you know, kind of getting more, you know, the, anticip the anticipation for the 
Errol Spence Crawford fight, you know, has been, you know, has risen to the basic to the stratosphere. I mean, people want to see that fight. So uh, every time Errol Spence goes anywhere or appears on any program, people asking me, "When are you going to fight Terence Crawford?" And so one of the uh, one of the other tricks now that Errol Spence is using in his attempt to uh, duck that conversation, you know, is that he can move up and fight. Canelo Alvarez. So now, now with that, once he said that, once he started floating that out there, that narrative out there, you know, a lot of these LD, LDBC fanboys took that and, and ran with it and talked about how Errol Spence is calling out uh, Canelo and that's going to that's be the biggest fight in boxing. But that never really happened. Errol Spence never called out Canelo. He just floated the idea that he could move up and fight Canelo. He never said to Canelo, hey, Canelo, I want to fight you, okay? He never called out Canelo, never. But a lot of these fanboys out there, especially uh, Blue Blood Sports and fan in boxing, you know, they're running with that narrative, you know, about the biggest fight in boxing and this, that, and the other. And, you know, again, you know, while they're at the same time, you know, because they're calling Canelo a duck for not fighting uh, Errol Spence when Errol Spence haven't actually called out Canelo. So you see how ridiculous it gets, okay? But this is what these guys are, this is the kind of narrative that these guys are spinning out there. So we're going to do a little uh, scenario here. I'm going to play some clips so you can see what's really going on. And, you know, we're going to start out with this clip where the last time, uh, as a matter of fact, the last time Canelo fought, Errol Spence showed up at his fight, okay? This is immediately, this is immediately after uh, Crawford showed up in his fight, okay, and and then he, he said he didn't understand why Crawford showed up in his fight, okay, but here he is, he showed up at Canelo's fight, and then he's out, you know, he's talking about, he can move, when they, when they ask him about Crawford, which they in, in, inevitably do when he appears in public, you know, Crawford's name follows him wherever he goes, so when he was asked about Crawford, he shifted the conversation to talking about he could move up and fight Canelo. Okay, and he's at Canelo's fight saying this. Now, he, he didn't go into the ring, you know, at the fight. He didn't call out Canelo. He just said, I can move up and fight Canelo. And then he laughed. Okay, but so we're going to play that clip and on on one or two more clips. And then we're going to go ahead and talk about what uh, Andre Ward and Tim Bradley said about Errol Spence ducking uh, Terrence Crawford. So let's start with the, this clip right here. Let's check this out. Now, I follow you on social media, like a lot of people do, and there was a graphic that was thrown up recently of all the top welterweights, and you commented, like, look, what are we doing here? I beat several of the guys on this graphic. Can we be done with everybody else but Terrence Crawford? Can we just do Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford? I mean, that, that could happen. We got to see how it go, but, you know, like I said, I can move up to 160 and fight Canelo Avarius. <laughs> Congratulations. Back here. Way back. Jeff Zimmerman fight news. Uh, did you see Errol Spence tonight at the fight? And what about fighting him back at Cowboy Stadium in Dallas next year? Mm, sí, sí, lo vi. La verdad que, eh, pues obviamente, agradecido de que estén aquí. Eh, pues ahorita tenemos otras metas, ¿no? Tenemos otras otras metas a corto plazo que es ganar los títulos en las 168 libras y pues más adelante veremos. Yes, yes, I did saw him. I'm very grateful that he was here. But reality is that we have other goals right now. We have the goals of the 168 pound titles. Okay, so you see, they asked him about Crawford. He starts talking about Canelo, okay, that he could move up. He didn't say, I want to move up and fight Canelo. He didn't say, I'm going to move up and fight Canelo. He didn't call out Canelo. He just basically used Canelo's name to avoid talking about Crawford. And he said, oh, I can move up and fight uh, Canelo at 160. But we saw what Canelo did, you know, when they asked him about fighting Errol Spence. He basically dismissed it and said that, you know, he has bigger fish to fry, you know, at 168. And, you know, by definition, I think he's probably just saying, even though he didn't come out and say that, he's probably saying, you know, Canelo, uh, Errol Spence got his own business at 147. Maybe you should go handle that, okay? So basically, he was summarily dismissed by Canelo. And, you know, he made him look, Basically, you know, it made him look ridiculous, you know, because here he is at Canelo's fight, just after recently saying he doesn't know why Crawford is coming to his fight, okay? He's at Canelo's fight. He didn't call out Canelo. 
Okay. He, he, I mean, so what is he doing there? What is he doing at Canelo's fight? If he's not going to call out Canelo. So he's at Canelo's fight. He didn't call out Canelo. And they asked him about Crawford. And he started talking about Canelo. So we see that that's just an attempt. Okay. It's a stunt. It was a stunt that he pulled, basically, to try and, you know, uh, dampen or get rid of the conversation about him fighting Crawford. I mean, it's a duck move. Okay. And it was exposed by Canelo because Canelo just basically dismissed that because there's no conversation with the Canelo camp about him fighting Errol Spence. There, there is none and there never was. Okay. I mean, so it is what it is. So let's, con let's, let's watch another video clip. Check this out. Is the Spence you fought last September at Staples? Would that guy be Crawford, or from what you know? That guy know? was re was very good. Mm -hmm. He was he was good to the point where the last round, I, I we came in, we touched gloves. Normally it just touch gloves and you fight, but I, I touched gloves with him and I said I said I said good shit, boy, because it the work was that good, and the night was that good and that competitive, and I, and I wanted it and I could tell that he wanted it too. Um, does that fighter beat Terence Crawford? That fighter was strong. That fighter was very good. I saw some holes. I saw I saw that I was a step ahead of him a majority of that fight. And with get, saying that, no, I don't think that that fighter can beat Terence Crawford. Mm -hmm. But I've already said that in a match, I don't think uh, Errol Spence could beat Terence Crawford. I think that Terence wins that fight. I think he's got more in his arsenal. So there it is. That's you know Sean Porter for those of, those of you that don't know. Uh, you know basically saying that. And he fought Errol Spence, and you know, I think he probably had, you know, he knows Terence Crawford very well. As a matter of fact, they're very good friends. And he's basically saying he doesn't think that Errol Spence can beat Terence Crawford. I mean, you know, that's what he's a professional boxer. Okay, he has fought Errol Spence, so if anybody should know, he should know. Okay, so these are the type of things that you know a lot of people in the boxing world you know actually know now most of the casual fans don't know anything about these type of things and you know they they you know they just go by these narratives that these uh people like Fannin and Blue Bloods put out they're spinning and you know they believe whatever these guys say but uh now we have professional boxers like uh like uh Sean Porter uh and most of the boxing community believe that you know pound for pound king uh Terence Crawford can beat Errol Spence and that's why he, he he's been ducking Crawford for, for the past three years and you know I, I guess in a way you can't really blame him I mean why you know uh, run into a fight with a guy you know is going to beat you or what you that, or that you think can beat you I mean we don't know how the fight would play out actually have, the fight has to happen for us to see what you know what that is and that's why people want to see this fight because they want to see if uh, Terence Crawford can actually beat Errol Spence but again Errol Spence doesn't seem to want to take the challenge he doesn't seem to want to challenge himself uh, he's making all kind of reasons why he, the fight shouldn't happen and he, him and his coach Derek James has been ducking Crawford for the past three years But now it looks like you know, we have reached a sort of a watershed uh, You know now everybody, you know is jumping under the bandwagon in terms of wanting to see this fight and basically calling out Errol Spence for his ducking moves and so we see the latest in that uh, scenario is a uh, Tim Bradley and Andre Ward, okay, and the you know the, the color commentary team on ESPN, okay, uh, Tim Bradley, uh, Krieger, and uh, Andre Ward. So let's play that video clip right now and see what he's actually said, which you know has, you know, uh, <laughs> you know what Tim Bradley actually said, and which has made uh, Blue Blood Sports and Fan and Boxing. You know, uh, become uh, uh, you know they they basically got their panties in a bunch right now about what he said, and you know they are they are out there, you know, uh, going over going doing overtime and spinning their narratives, you know, about what Tim Bradley said and trying to basically, uh, you know, belittle what Tim Bradley is saying. But the problem with that is that you know, a lot uh fan and boxing and uh, blue blood sport have you know pretty good a pretty big platform in terms of their their youtube channel uh tim bradley has the biggest platform him and andre ward they're on espn and so you know their comments and their views go out to millions of people not you know a, a couple thousand or tens of thousands or whatever but millions so and so on their platform they're basically co-signing what i've been saying 
And what have, you know, a few other people have been saying, Errol Spence is ducking Terence Crawford. And so it is what it is. And so here, I'm going to play the clip for you. Give me one second. Let me set it up for you. Here it goes. So there it is. So this is what Tim Bradley said that has uh Blue Blood Sports and Phantom Box and Panthers in a bunch. He basically told the truth, okay, that you know I've known for a while now, and that most people are starting to realize that Aaron Spence don't want to fight Terrence Crawford. Okay. Uh I mean, you know, it's the biggest fight in boxing actually at this point in time. Uh at your own weight, okay, yet you're talking about moving up and fighting Canelo. And you're not even calling out Canelo. It's just a talking point that you're doing. You're not really, you know, you're not really serious about actually, you know, calling out uh, Canelo Alvarez. Now, people can say, you know, people talk about, oh, well, when Canelo Book uh, uh, moved up and fought uh, Golovkin, nobody said anything about it, you know, but now they're talking about uh, it's not, not, it's not going to happen for uh, Errol Spence and Canelo. Well, that's because... Uh, Kel Brook didn't talk about fighting uh, Golovkin. He actually moved up. He, ha he actually called out Golovkin. He didn't say he could move up and fight Golovkin. He actually called Golovkin out, moved up, and fought Golovkin. Okay, that's the difference. So, I mean, if I thought Errol Spence was serious about fighting Canelo, I would say, oh, I'll, I'll be all for it. But I don't see that. I see that he's just using Canelo's name in a cloud-chasing move to avoid fighting Terence Crawford, okay? And so it is what it is. And so we got to tell it like it is. And, you know, uh, this is what's really going on. So, uh, again, I don't believe Errol Spence want any part of Terence Crawford, okay? Uh, I think that uh, Errol Spence, again, is just using, um, you know, he has been using all kind, but he's been ducking Terence Crawford by any means necessary, any means at the disposal, you know, including trying to cloud chase Canelo's name and use Canelo as a way to duck Terence Crawford. And we saw what Canelo did, you know, by, you know, basically dismissing the whole idea. And so, you know, he basically, I mean, probably just basically saying, stop using my name, you know, to avoid Terence Crawford, man. Just, you know, do what you have to do. I'm going to do what I have to do up here at 168 pounds. I want to unify him which is what Errol Spence is supposed to be doing at 147. You know, when he first came into the game, Errol Spence was all about strap season. He wanted to collect all the belts. But now that he has two belts, okay, uh, and his next fight has to be Terrence Crawford or Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao looked like he's getting ready to go and fight McGregor or somebody next, an exhibition fight. He doesn't have any interest in fighting Errol Spence or Terrence Crawford, it doesn't seem like. You know, which I think he, you know, Manny, Manny Pacquiao should be stripped of the belt if he doesn't fight either guy. But that, you know, uh, right now, you know, since Errol Spence tried the cloud chase move against Canelo and Canelo dismissed him, so, you know, making him look so bad, uh, what does Errol Spence do now? What's his next move? Who is he going to fight next? You know, uh, I'm going to do a separate video about that. But yeah, so uh, Tim Bradley, 
you know, uh, using the platform ESPN is basically, you know, uh, expose Errol Spence. Him and Andre Ward is basically expose Errol Spence what he's been doing. You know, uh, people, the, the fight, the fight fans out there want to see the fight between Terence Crawford and Errol Spence. And uh, Errol Spence has been doing everything, and his team, and these guys like Phantom Box and some of these LDBC guys, you know, have been, you know, uh, trying to get, trying not to make that fight happen. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, I even heard some of these guys out there talking about, oh, when, when Errol Spence went to, uh, when he went to the Canelo fight, it was a beautiful move. It was a chess move that he did. Oh, yeah, a chess move. It backfired in his face. Okay, Canelo, you know, because as I said, he never actually called out Canelo, and we saw that. Okay, he just went there as a way to stop the conversation about Terence Crawford, and we saw what happened. It, you know, he went there and he was asked about Terence Crawford, so that didn't help him at all. Okay, going to Canelo fight didn't help him. He, he he had to actually answer questions about Terence Crawford. Okay, and you saw what he said that he could move up and fight Canelo. He never called out Canelo. He didn't go in the ring where Canelo was and say, "I want to fight you." Okay. He's just, you know, there, you know, uh, trying to pull a publicity stunt. And uh, it backfired in his face. So now uh, he's not getting the Canelo fight because there was never any fight to get in the first place. Uh, it doesn't look like the Manny Pacquiao fight is going to happen because Manny Pacquiao is talking about fighting uh, uh, Conor McGregor in an in a, in a, uh, exhibition. And he probably, if he's forced to probably fight Mikey Garcia. Uh, so what's next for Errol Spence? What, what's his move? You know, now that he's been checkmated in his chess move, what is he going to do now? Who does he fight next? Okay. I mean, who else is left? Well, Sean Porter is mandatory. Okay. And so that fight is, you know, might happen or could happen because, uh, uh, Porter has been talking about fighting, you know, uh, activate that mandatory, uh, but Port is also the mandatory for 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 a Crawford, and you know he is talking about that fight, but he hasn't activated that mandatory yet either. So I guess he's trying to make up his mind. But at the end of the day, you know Errol spent. I mean uh, Crawford told uh, man told Porter that you know if you want to fight me, then go ahead and activate the mandatory, and I'm going to stop you. As a matter of fact, he said he dare he dares Porter to activate the mandatory. So uh, but yeah, up to now Porter hasn't done that. But yet still, you have people out there saying that. Crawford is ducking Porter. I mean, these people out there are ridiculous. I mean, these people are so, so many people are so they are dumb as rocks. I mean, they really know nothing about boxing. When there's a mandatory, you know, as a matter of fact, this guy, Fannin guy, uh, you know, uh, I mean, this guy's a real hater, okay? He's out there saying that Errol Spence, saying that, that, saying that Crawford is trying to get Errol Spence, that, 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 uh, he's saying that, Crawford is complaining about what uh, Errol Spence offered him when Errol Spence said that, he, he, you know, Crawford should take 60, 40, 70, 30, or whatever, they whatever, whatever he decides to give him. That's what he said, okay, about the fight with Crawford, okay? And so you have Phantom Boxing out there talking about, oh, uh, Crawford is, is, you know, is complaining about what Errol Spence said, but he's trying to get Porter to take 75, 25 in their fight. Now, you know, I mean, that's an outright lie, okay? That's not the truth at all. Uh, at the end of the day, Crawford, you know, is a champ, okay? Porter is his mandatory. And as a mandatory, it doesn't matter who the champ or the man, or, you know, the double beer, it doesn't matter who the champ is or who the mandatory is. There's a, there's a standard for mandatory challenges and that you know uh 75 25 that's not what Crawford is asking for that's the standard okay that's what it is that's the that's the rules of boxing when you when a guy moves up to, up to uh to become a mandatory to whichever champion he is a mandatory for they have a standard uh percentage that he gets to fight the champion okay and so I believe that it's 75-25. So it's not uh, Crawford trying to impose a 75-25 split on Sean Porter. That's what the standard is. No, you know, that's, it's been that way ever since, you know, 
from the beginning of boxing, basically, from the beginning of those, from 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 the beginning of the mandatory. So to say that you know Crawford is trying to get uh, Porter to take a 75-25 split, it, you know, is a total lie. Okay, but that this is the kind of thing that these guys resort to in you know in 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 their lies about Terence Crawford. Okay, now I mean. The fact of the matter is, for the fight to even happen, Sean Porter has to activate the mandatory. Once the mandatory is activated, him and you know, him and uh, Crawford can sit down and they can work out whatever they want to work out in terms of making the fight actually happen. Okay, but once Sean Porter activates the mandatory, the fight has to happen. Crawford has to fight him, but I'll I'll, I'll be stripped of his belt. Okay, and so. Crawford has no control over that. Crawford can't make Porter activate the mandatory. He can only tell Porter activate the mandatory if you want to fight me. Okay, and he had said that. He said, you know, it's not. He doesn't have a choice as to whether to fight Crawford. I mean, he does have a choice whether he can fight Porter or not. When once Porter activates the mandatory, but the only way, the only choice he has is to relinquish the belt, and that's not a choice for. But I mean, we know he's not going to do that. So. It's up to Sean Porter. The ball is in Sean Porter's court. He has to activate the mandatory for that fight to happen. They could negotiate the, the, the percentage if they want to. I mean, I'm pretty sure they probably will because they're friends. So, you know, it is what it is. But at the end of the day, Porter has to activate the mandatory. But you have these guys fighting boxing, you know, I mean, this guy really hates Crawford and they really have Spence in a protection program because, you know, they don't want Blue Blood Sports and, 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 and uh, and uh, fan of boxing don't want fans to fight Crawford. And the only reason we can think of why they don't want to fight, the, you know, what, which would be the biggest money making fight for Spence and Crawford, okay? Uh, the only reason they don't want to see that fight because, you know, they, they believe that uh, Crawford is going to beat Spence. And that's what it is, what it is. So, you know, they talk about they want to see the best fight, the best. They want Crawford to fight. They say Crawford ain't fighting anybody. He needs to fight better fighters. He needs to fight better competition. So Crawford calls out the supposedly best at 147, but they don't want to see him fight Spence. Okay? They say they want him to fight Porter. But Spence just beat Porter. And you said that Crawford needs to fight better fighters and better competition. So what better competition for him to fight than Spence? But they don't want to see that fight. Crawford ain't fight nobody. I mean, it, it, the logic is ridiculous. Okay, and so it is what it is. But yeah, these guys are real haters, man. Uh, you know, they're really hating on Crawford. They, you know, they got this plantation mentality. Okay, you know, Negro mentality where you know they, you know, they. I mean, it, it's it's ridiculous at this point. You know. So there it is. So I'm not the only one that knows that these guys are haters, okay? Uh, you know, uh, these guys are going around making running narratives and spinning all kind of foolishness about fighters and, you know, making boxing look like a laughing stock, basically, okay? And so, you know, uh, I'm not the only one that, that, that says that and I'm not the only one that knows that. You know, other people know that. But like I said, at this point, uh, it looks like it, look, it looks like Errol Spence is running out of places to run and hide uh, from uh, Terence Crawford because now you have even major platforms like ESPN with uh, Andre Ward and uh, Tim Bradley You're basically saying the same thing I'm saying. Errol Spence is ducking Terence Crawford and they need to stop, okay? They need to make that fight happen. But like I said before previously, it looks like, you know, we're going to have to drag... Errol Spence into the ring against Terence Crawford. That's what it looks like, okay? Because he's not going to go in there willingly, okay? And we see that, 
okay and the good thing is that i'm not the only one that sees that now you have tim bradley andre ward basically co-signing what i'm saying in terms of errol spence ducking terence crawford and it is what it is so that's what i have to report for right now that's all i have i think i'm going to leave it there this is tbe boxing i'm out